Thank you, Jesus. Father, have your way today with me. Today I submit and yield to the office that you call me, which is pastor, teacher. Father, allow me to be a conduit of your voice. I receive revelation from heaven. I thank you for the word, for in it is the power. Lord, I submit to it. I give you praise and glory, Father. Today on Father's Day, I say happy Father's Day to you in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. praise God. I got some good news for you. Um, my, my wife, thank you, honey, for... Um, for that prayer during worship, when you, when you shared that prayer about acknowledging that there was a, a sort of a spirit of, uh, you said, thickness and heaviness, I wanted to give light to that. How many of you felt that a little bit? All hands, right? All hands on deck, right? It doesn't mean we're, we're like saying, hey, you know, give me, some, give me some heaviness, right? But you recognize it, and being a believer is, is uh, recognizing those things, being a believer in, in, in the Lord Jesus. And he said, when you uh, are confronted with a mountain, I'm paraphrasing, he said, speak to the mountain, right? And if you believe that the mountains can be removed. So when you recognize that there's a spirit of heaviness there, uh, it's super important to know what to do with that. So if you have your Bibles, you can either take a note, uh, but I'm going to be referring to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, one of my faves, and um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and this pertains to what my wife was sharing. And um, so I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever felt disconnected from God? Okay. Man, if you haven't, you ain't human. <laughs> and so Jesus even felt disconnected from God at one point. When? When he became sin for us. See, God can't look upon sin. And so there was this disconnection in that moment. That's why he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So he, having connection with, with the Father in that moment, didn't have it. And as humans, he had to do that because this is something that we experience uh, really, really often. You know, none of you as often as me, like every hour, there's a little something, something going on, you know, within me. Disconnect, whew, reconnect. So... I want to give you a little bit of concrete, tangible to know what to do when that happens. Because we've all acknowledged, hey, I felt disconnected before, right? Sometimes for me, I'm kind of a why guy. I try to troubleshoot stuff. What happens when, when, you know, when this is going on? Why? Because there's a desire to get what? Reconnected. To get, you know, kind of arm in arm back with the Lord. Why? Because God is good, right? We, we know that. His word said, the word says that God is good. Why can't God get down? I'm not talking like, get down. I'm saying like, why can't he get down? Because he's up. He's always up. So when you feel disconnected, are you up or down? Usually you're down. That's why you feel disconnected. So this scripture here, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verses 3 and 4. Super awesome. Acknowledges things. This is I've shared this many times before. What you saying, Pastor? Why are you sharing it again? I'm just gonna keep sharing it until you get it. <laughs> until you start calling me up and text me and go, "Hey, I got a little something for you, Pastor." Amen. Y'all awake in here? I sure. I know it's early. I know the last several Sundays, you know, except for last Sunday, we've been, you know, 8 a.m. What have we been doing? You know, praise the Lord, right? Then you get to watch the video a little later of me, right? Praise God. Sometimes in the evening, you can pick and choose. But boy, when we're back to getting up, it's like, <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm glad you're awake. So, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For our warfares are, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Two powerful verses. When you read this, it's acknowledging something. So though we walk in the flesh, right? Amen. Human nature. This is how we walk around all the time. We do not war according to the flesh. So now it acknowledges that you're walking around a natural person and then the scripture says we don't war. 
Some of us have a challenge with that. I don't want to be in a war. I don't want to, I don't want to get in a fight. I'm all about peace. Put a flower in my ear. Just get away from me, warfare. Listen, if you're, if you're living and breathing, most of you are, all of you are, 100%, right? That means that you are going to feel and have sensations of because you're walking in this natural man and you got to start understanding y'all are in a war. You are. So when you acknowledge those things, two things, those things, my, my Hispanic accent started, cuts into me sometimes, man. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is, because I'm a cholo and a vato sometimes, but what happens is you, you, Sometimes we disconnect from that because this next verse in verse 4 is so powerful. You're walking in the flesh. You get it. You know you're in a fight. And if you accept those two things, you're like, okay, so now what do I do? Here's where we get disconnected. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What is carnal? I'll simplify it for you. Five senses. It's sense living. Not like, I got good sense. It's not like, I got five cents. It's the senses. It's not carnal. It's the five senses. So sometimes when you're feeling thick and heavy, you feel like you've lost a little ground in your walk, it's because you are operating in the realm of the five senses. It doesn't mean you're just going to be floating off the earth and all spiritual all the time. It means that when you have a disconnect and you're feeling low and down, you're, you're thinking about the thing in the sensual realm, right? The scripture says that if God is for me, who could be against me? What can man do to me? Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> God's for me. Who could be against me? What could man do to me? You know how you get disconnected? You start answering the question of what man can do to you. He can take away my job. He can take away my paycheck. He could rob me from some of the liberties that I want. You know, I can't go here without wearing that or doing this without saying this. You start answering the questions of what the man can do to you, and you'll start, you'll, you, you start tracking on that, and all of a sudden they start making you operate within the carnal realm, the five senses. Amen? Amen. So that little portion was not the message for you today on Father's Day. That was for free. How many of you want to receive that free gift? Praise the Lord. I love it. I love it. I love it. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. How many of you are fathers? Amen. Praise God. Every man in here should be raising their hand. Andrew, I don't know. There you go. Yeah, Jimmy, you know, you, you, you got here, son, from seed, right? So that means that you are the possessor and owner of seed. We'll leave it right there. My point is, is that at some point, yeah, you are a father. So this, the reason I ask that question is that today, James Dominic Hernandez, do you, um, do you have a natural child with that beautiful daughter of mine over there? I'm not a born one. That's right. You don't. <laughs> you don't. But, well, wait, do we have a surprise? I'm just messing. <laughs> Here's my point. See, we, we, this, is how we take, this is how we take account of our lives every single day. What do I physically have that I can see? And because I don't see it, that means that I'm not it, right? So as it pertains to being a father, if I don't see a child, I don't have a child yet. And you know what? Sometimes people are like, I ain't ready for that baby yet. It's okay. It's all good. In due, in due season, right? But you're going, because I don't see it and I don't have it, that means I'm not it. What I'm trying to get you to tap into is not the five senses. I can't see, touch, or feel, or hear my child, so therefore I'm not a father. But by faith, when you know that you have a seed in you, do you have a desire to have a child? Sometime. Yeah. How about you, sweet, beautiful daughter? Yeah. Yes. You have a desire. At some point, you have a desire to, to have a child. That's all it's got to have. So that means that somewhere in the future, it could be distant. I don't know how much distance. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. So somewhere in the distant future, you have one in the what realm? The spiritual realm. This is the dilemma and the good news all in the same sandwich. Amen. It really is. And so this is what 
what I'm sharing with you uh, this day on Father's Day. When I ask that question, all men should be raising their hand, right? You're like, well, I may not have any biological children. I probably won't, but guess what? Pops, you're a father. You raise your hand high and proud. You know why? Because you're my daddy. I love it. Let's praise God. JJ, you know, you're kind of in that in-between realm, huh, son? Yeah, praise the Lord, right? You had a desire a while back. Apparently, you had the seed, because, you know, mama's, yeah, bun in the oven. This is, hey, you know what? This, this is not R-rated. This is, this is G-rated, God-rated, right? This is what happens. So... Now that you all understand, all you men, that you are fathers and I am one, what do we do on Father's Day, right? So James, we we covered what, you know, what's going on in the distant future. But when you think about Father's Day, who do you think about? You. Woo! Praise the Lord. He thinks of me. I'm his daddy. Oh, that's so nice. You, you know my address, you know, if there's gifts that the Lord has, you know, put on your heart, I receive them by faith, right? So, you know, you think about me, you said, and sometimes when it comes to Father's Day, you know, some of us are really excited to get our father something for Father's Day, right? Praise the Lord. There are wives who get their husbands, who are the father of their children, things for Father's Day. So I wake up this morning and I go to my computer And um, there's a little envelope there from my wife. I ain't your daddy, but you know what? (laughs) She recognized me. And honey, forgive me for all those years, way in the years past on Mother's Day. What did I used to say? You ain't my mama. (laughs) But I would always get her some stuff. (laughs) Almost always, you know. There, you know, back in the day, I was about a 1.2 on the romantic scale. (laughs) Praise the Lord, 1.9 is where I'm at today. You know, I'm constantly trying to ascend. Praise the Lord. She got me something. I receive it. Uh, We think about getting fathers things, right? How many of you out there got your father something? Could have been a prayer. Could have been something tangible. Praise God. Wow, that's good. Evie, did you get your daddy something? Oh, don't tell us what it is. You're so sweet. You think about getting your father something. Now, the Lord's Prayer. Let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Stop. Where's our Father? Hmm. What would you get God the Father today? Praise. Praise. There's really no wrong answer if it's good. What else would you give him? My time. Time? Oh, that's a good one. Anything else? You? Yourself. That's, that's amazing. It's all good. You know what? The Father, he desires all those things. He likes all those things. But you know one of the greatest things that you could give the Father in heaven? I'll give you an obvious sign. Mm. It's not a T-shirt. Now, I was going to wear this to church today, but the scripture says you can't wear t-shirts. I'm totally messing. <laughs> I just wanted to wear pink today. I had a conversation with my son this week, and um, there was the blessed one. It's all three of them. I've talked to all three of them. But this one particular conversation, he was sharing something with me, and he was, there was something in the hope realm that he was kind of wanting, but he sort of, he's like, well, you know, he sort of kind of made a, a little bit of a back door. If it, you know, if it doesn't happen, you know, that's okay. And I stopped him and I said, JJ, I'm not going to tell you which son it was. <laughs> Get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. Amen. Get your hopes up. What you can give the Father in heaven today and every day is give the Father hope. The Bible says that he delights in the prosperity of his servant. He delights when you are prosperous. The Bible says about hope 
that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a good word makes it glad. What could you today give the Father? See, when I talked about you giving, giving whether it's your, your husband, the father of your children, or, or the, the father-to-be of your children, or your actual biological father, or somebody's daddy, whether you went out and bought them something or gave them something, oftentimes you think, I just want to give them something. Right? Something that they can use. But on, and, and, and our hope is that we want to bless you. But did you know that Father in Heaven wants to bless you? That He's got so many promises. He wants to increase you, multiply you. He wants to put you in a position that gives Him glory. God did this for my life. Then how can you do that? Give the Father your hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Oh, sometimes... I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Sometimes people... Gee, I hope, I hope I don't get the sickness. That's like you, hope and sickness in the same. This is this is how people think. Well, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that doesn't happen. This is how our mind is trained about hope. And oftentimes, when we start thinking about God in heaven, we have that same mentality. Well, I hope he helps me. Well, God is good, but there's not enough good going on in my life. But he's, he's going to remain good, but I guess that's just not the plan that he has for me. Because carnal, five cents, is recognized, well, I don't feel like I got enough in the bank account. I feel like this. I touch, I'm touching this tangible thing that's negative in my life. There's just this stuff that's outweighed. It's a, but God is still good. Hmm. Give the Father something to work with. Give Him hope. Hope. So, Jeremiah 17, 5 and 10. I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation and one of the verses out of the New King James. This is the the plan, and and it's wisdom from God, and it's it's the plan of God for your life. And verse 5 Chapter 17 of Jeremiah says it this way. This is what the Lord says. Anytime you read that, you should be like, why? Because if you really believe that Scripture is talking to you, like it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all Scripture is given by inspiration for God, it's for you so that you can be thoroughly equipped, not lacking anything in your life. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans. Kind of sounds a little bit like 2 Corinthians, right? We're in a war. We're in the flesh, but we shouldn't be operating carnally in the sensual realm. He said, Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. How did you, you, your heart says as a believer, I don't want to turn my heart away from the Lord. Well, I want to go back to you. If God is for me, who can be against me? What can man do to me? This is how you turn your heart away from the Lord. You start taking account of what man could do to you or what he's already done. That's what happens. You, you turn away that way. They are, they are like stunted shrubs. Don't want to be a stunted shrub. In the desert with no hope for future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. Don't be salty. But blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. blessed. Evie, that was the best answer ever. <laughs> Right? She said it stronger than some of y'all. Some of you just said it just because, you know, you're like, you know, when you say something to the parrot, you know, Polly wants a what? Cracker. Cracker. You just say it back. She said it with some passion. I love that. You bless me. But blessed are those, Evie, who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Give the Father hope. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Oh, that's so good. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. See, it started, it started off, good, you know, like cursed and then good, blessed. And then what blessing does, and then we're going back to verse 9, the human heart is deceitful. That's not me. It's important to extract out of what the Lord is trying to say. The Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep or guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Right? So is your heart filled with hope? 
Is that what you're giving the Father? Or is it filled with the worry and anxieties? This is what the Scripture is extracting. You're either one or the other. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. That's that carnal, that, that, that mental warfare that we go through. I know God is good, but all I can see is bad, right? The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord... Search all hearts and examine all secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Now, you can, you can interpret this sometimes going, well, you're just getting what you deserve. I'm bad, so God's giving me bad. That's not what this is saying. The New King James says it this way. Even to verse 10 of Jeremiah 17, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So what you are doing, you are getting. So if bad is happening, God's going, I have given you over to what it is that you do. If you do bad, think bad, think carnal, then you'll get the fruit of that. If you think good, think God, give me hope, give me something to work with, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're going to be like that tree that's planted by the river in, the, in a parched desert. You are going to grow. You are going to be prosperous. That's what it is. So when my wife prayed, there's this thickness. What it is, again, it's this carnal mindset that we have. Well, I'm just thinking about how I feel. How many people are in here? Well, I don't know if I should raise a hand, raise a finger. I really want to praise the Lord, but my body just really doesn't want to do that right now. I'll just stand here. You start getting in your head, and what happens is God is spirit. Those that come to him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we're, when we're getting before the word, it's important to have that acknowledgement that God's word is spirit. But if you're reading it in the carnal, just pick up a magazine if you want to do that. If you just want to learn something and just get some knowledge, just read you know, it doesn't mean you can't read. This is why there's so many people like they can read the Bible. And there, there are so many people that have read the Bible, but they're looking for bad in it. They're looking for contradictions. They're looking for, I'm going to get studied up on this thing that I don't believe in. And they're, well, there's some people out there that know Scripture forward and backward better than a lot of people that have been walking with the Lord for a lot of years. And the power of God can't reside in them because they're, in, they're going at it with a, with, with a not a spirit to receive, but one that is deceived. And they're looking at it to have knowledge to have something that they can combat you against. So in essence, they're approaching it in the carnal and they're not in the submissive spiritual, so they can't get the revelation from God. They could read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And they're like, I don't believe that. I don't see Jesus. And then there's a believer on the other side like us that are going, God so loved the world that he gave my precious Lord Jesus for me. How can you two people read the same thing? Because one of them has hope in God. And the other one is, I just got to see what's going on. What did Jesus say to Thomas? Doubting Thomas, right? He said, Thomas, you see and you believe. But blessed are those who do not see yet they believe. So give the Father something to work with. Give him some hope. I want to share a little definition of, of hope as, as it pertains to this scripture in Jeremiah. The Hebrew uh, translation for that word literally means trust, confidence, refuge, act of confiding, an object of confidence, a state of confidence, security. That's, that's really good. So this is having hope in God, all of those things, right? Hope in the Noah Webster, I love this. It's a little lengthy, a couple of these two, but I, I just got to read them. I've read them before, but I'm going to read this again. Hope. It's important that you have, you have a revelation not just knowledge of the definition of hope, because as we're talking about for, the, for Father's Day, what could you give your Father in heaven? Hope. Hope, we've said, right? Give, so what, is it, what does that mean to you? Hope, in the Noah Webster, says this, a desire of some good, accompanied with at least a slight expectation of obtaining it. 
or a belief that it is obtainable. Hope differs from wish and desire in this, that it implies some expectation of obtaining the good desired or the possibility of possessing it. Hope, therefore, always gives pleasure and joy. So when you think about hope to the Father, oh my gosh, there's so much going on in my life, and you know, we get to these places where it's negative and we cry out to the Father, sometimes it's literally like that. We're crying. But if you think about giving the Father hope, and it's saying it always gives pleasure. Well, things aren't real pleasurable in, in a lot of people's lives right now. There's a lot of things going on. So I'll wait till I can see and sense pleasure before I give it to the Father. That's, what, that's where faith comes in, right? The book of James, consider it joy in various trials, right? Because the testing of your faith produces patience. You Patience, you need to be, that time between what you're hoping for and the manifestation of it, patience is that gap in between, and that's, that gap is defined in patience as unwavering. Unwavering. That shirt that I held up, Hebrews 10.23, hold fast your profession or confession of hope. Why? Because He, God, our Father in heaven, happy Father's Day, I'm giving you some hope, is faithful. He's faithful. So regardless of what you're seeing, giving the Father hope, saying, I have a confident expectation of a better future in this situation, and you may be at the lowest of lows. I mean, snails might be looking down on you in that moment. Like, what's going on down there? Oh, you're a believer. Woohoo! I'll just slide right over you. That's the moment that see, you have to recognize. You can't wait till you get up and then praise God. you gotta, you got to recognize that you're in a war and a fight and that you're going to be in those positions, but God is the one, if you allow Him to be your anchor, if you give Him some hope, that He will, he will in that moment, that's what it means that in your weakness when the snails are looking down at you, that He becomes strong. Why? Because you quit doing things by your own effort, your own thought process. You quit doing things by how you see, how you smell, how you touch. All the things that are going on and it's inside of you it's inside of you that you got to reach in you got to turn inward and go god i am not i'm in a war here but i'm not going to war according to my five senses and what it is that i'm seeing my hope is in you Amen. my hope is in you it starts with that confession man that's good that's good. Jeremiah 29, 11. This talks about the plan of God for your life. Sometimes people go, well, God's got a plan for everybody. You know, and then you look at what's going on in your life, and you're like, well, this wasn't really going according to my plans. You know, I said when I was this age, I'd make this much, and I'd be there, and I'd do all this kind of stuff. And you're like, ooh, maybe those goals were a little too lofty. Or sometimes the victim mentality comes in, and you're like, well, I would have been there if this person would have done that, or that person got my job, and blah, 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 blah. Right? That, why, why, are you, why are people doing that? Because there's something that they were hoping for that didn't come to pass. And so now it starts to redefine potentially their future and what they think is going to happen. Mm. Right? Rubber meets the road right there. But this is God's plan for you. This is what his word says to you. If you believe God is for you, right, then who could be against you then what can man or the world do to you? If, you? if you really believe that scripture, then here, this is some good tastiness right here. Here's God's plan. This is, you should know God's plan for your life. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. That's God's plans for you, a future and a hope. Now, let's go back to you should get this definition of hope really solidified. Hope is, the, is a confident expectation of a better future. You know why I keep saying that over and over? Years ago, I was in a hopeless, hopeless place, and I heard a word from the Lord and I heard a man define it this way, this pastor, the same pastor that laid hands on me and anointed me into the office of the, the pastoral office to be a shepherd of the flock. Y'all are a good looking flock. Amen. He, he defined this and I went back and I ate 
that scripture that he preached. What do I mean by that? How did I eat it? I got it into my ears. I got it into my eyes. I got, I got it into the soil of my heart. See, the seed was there, but when I kept eating on it, it kept watering it, and pretty soon, hope, hope, hope. It just kept boiling up every single time when the snails were looking down at me. Hope. God's got a plan for me. It's a future and a hope. It's a confident expectation of a better future. That's what it is. So I'm constantly looking for, man, this is... I get to these situations like many of us do. It's like lollipops. They suck, you know? You're just like, God, this is like not good. But when I'm, I just don't want to say that in those moments. And God's got a plan for me. Jeremiah 29, 11. He's got a plan for me. It's a future and a hope. And right now, my present situation, whoo, man, I'm looking up at things that I shouldn't be looking up. But God's above those names, right? So in that weakness, God can become strong. When I submit to him and say, Father, today... Every day is Father's Day. And today, I give you my hope. You know why, God? Because you are for me. So if you are for me, who could be against me? And you could be looking at a bill that you don't have enough money to pay for. You could be looking at symptoms in your body that a doctor can't prescribe something to fix. You could be looking at a situation in your heart and your mind that somebody's just trampled all over it. But if you have a revelation that your God, your God in heaven... He wants to execute this plan in your life and He is able to do it. The Word says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly of all that we can think or ask. But it says according to the power that works in you. Is that power hope? Are you giving the Father what He wants? Man, I got kind of loud there. That's the Holy Spirit. You get from God what you expect from God. You get from God what you expect from God. See, we have knowledge that God is good, but did you, do you expect good to come to you from Him? Amen. You get from God what you expect from God. I like that. The Holy Spirit shared that with me this morning. I'm like, ooh, you're good. <laughs> Type that down. Type that down. Look, I got these pretty notes. It's like, oh, wow, he really prepared something. You know what I prepare? You know how I prepare I know that God is spirit. I get up and I just get still. I just listen. Lord, and it just so happened this last week that when I had this conversation with my son, God spoke to my heart right there. He said, this is the message. Give me hope. Get your hopes up. Amen. God wants to tell you, get your hopes up. You know what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm going fishing. <laughs> I'm going fishing. Me and my brother in the Lord. Hi, Jeremy. You know what's going to happen? Jeremy, do we go and we like, well, I hope we catch something. But, you know, if we don't, boy, the weather's supposed to be good. Well, it's supposed to be good today. It's a little cloudy. So there's a chance that it, well, it says it could be good. The forecast does, but it might not be. Are we still going to go? Yeah, we're going to go. Okay. Um, hmm. Well... Maybe we should make a backup plan. Maybe we should use bait instead of <laughs> flies. I've been tying flies lately. That's, that could be a backup plan. Well, I hope we catch something, but if not, you know what? It's going to be good fellowship. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. We may not catch fish. Then why are we going fishing? Why? Scripture says that God gave us all things to enjoy. And I'm going to tell you all something right now. I enjoy me some fishing. I do. That was me casting a rod. Did I break the wrist? It's 10, 10 and 2. I enjoy fishing. Do you know what the word says in Genesis? Increase, multiply. I've shared this with you before. The very words, first words that a man's ear ever heard from God, increase, multiply, subdue the earth, have dominion over it, the fish of the sea. We ain't going to the ocean, but we're going to a place that has a common denominator, the ocean does, water, H2O, and within it are fish. So Jeremy, I'm getting my hopes up. 
The Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Today I'm standing behind the podium, loving God, giving Him my hope, being a fisher of men. Why? Why am I talking about God? Because I used to be in a place where I was desperate and I didn't have answers. And God brought me out of a dark place. Today, sometimes I'm desperate and I don't have answers, but I trust in God. I put my hope in him and he keeps taking me from level to level. That's the why. So being a fisher of men today, spreading the word, giving God our hope. Tomorrow, I'm going to be fishing. I'm getting my hopes up. I don't have fish in my hand today, but I see him in my spirit. You watch. Next Sunday, I'm going to show you a picture of your pastor holding a beautiful rainbow trout. I'm going to catch him. They won't let him go. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's how you get your hopes up. That's what you do. Well, you know, there's more serious things going on in life right now, pastor, than you going on a fishing trip. You know, there's stuff going on. People are thinking that, and you should. But don't get down. Get up. Get your hope in God. Whatever it is that you're going through. Get your hopes up. You know why I'm looking forward to this fishing trip? Man, because we've been digging in. Just like everybody else. Everybody's got their challenges. Everybody's had long work weeks. Whatever it is that you're doing. you got things that are disrupting your schedule. you got stuff that, that's going on just like everybody else. So have I. So I'm looking forward to this fishing trip. Why? Because the Bible said God gives us all things to enjoy. And I enjoy fishing. He says he delights in the prosperity of his servant. So you know what? The Bible says let the Lord be magnified. When you look through a magnifying glass, woo, makes it bigger. Let the Lord be made bigger, be magnified, who delights in the prosperity of his servant. So God, I want to delight you tomorrow. I want to just point to you, Father. I want to give you joy by giving you my hope, and I'm going to catch me some fish. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a fun time. Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Living Bible says it this way, What is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. Amen. That's good. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. That's Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Living Bible. Psalm 31.24 says, Be of good courage. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. What does it mean to be of good courage? It means... Don't be discouraged. How do you get discouraged? You start focusing all the things that want to take your courage away, that have taken the breath out of you, that have taxed you physically, taxed you mentally, gotten you to a point where we call it's the breaking point. It's in those moments. That's when you go, Lord, I'm giving it to all to you right now because I am at my breaking point, but you are a God that is unbreakable. Amen. And today... I know that regardless of what my life looks like in this moment, in this minute, whatever's against me, that your plan is for me to have a future and a hope. So today, I'm getting my hopes up in you, Father. In this moment, I'm getting my hopes up in you. These are things that I believe in. These are things that I'm operating in. My wife and I, just like all of you, we've gone through some serious stuff. We've had some things happen in the last couple of days that would cause some serious crazy division in the family. Like, woo! I won't go into detail, but you know what we did? We put our hope in the Lord. We allowed the love of God to come into our hearts to take the higher road. It says the goodness of God brings men to repentance. The love of God, when you're in the love of God, it covers a multitude of sins. So you may have said some stuff or done some stuff with somebody and you're just like, mm, pride wants you to make you not want us, but you know what? Let let Love have its way. Put your hope in God because your hope is, well, you know what? Hey, you got one family member. I got several other ones. Let's, let's kick that one to the curb. No, you're like, God, I want to make amends. But, oh, God, they made me mad. They pushed the button or they did. But you know what? That the love of God live. 
Why put your hope in them? This is what it means to be prideful. No, I can't do that. They said something. You know what? That's crossing the line. That was it. They're completely, that's prideful. And you know what the scripture says? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him steadfast, steadfast, <laughs> fast in faith. What is faith? It's the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Give the Father some hope today. Get your hopes up. The things that you want and desire, they came from God. Get in His presence. Get your hope in Him and say, you know what, I see those in here for me. I, I don't know when it is, but they'll happen faster when I'm in your presence and I start confessing. And then when something comes against it, you hold fast to your confession of hope because He who promises is faithful. Don't be moved on what's on the outside. Get a vision of what God says for you, that you can have on the inside and the hope. Hope left alone it's just hope. Use the currency of faith to get that from heaven. What is faith? It's confessing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Go to the bank. Let's say you got five, ten million dollars in there. And you know, you want to make a little withdrawal. You're like, hey, I want to get what's mine. What is the person from the bank gonna ask you for? ID. ID. Identification. <laughs> They're like, yeah, so your name is uh, John Hernandez. You got five million in the bank. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, just give it to me. They're like, oh, yeah. Well, you said the right name. I need a little ID. Well, I left it, and the dog ate, and then it's in, the, it's in my... I said, I drove my wife's car today, and then my stuff isn't in. They're like, okay, come on back, Mr. Hernandez. Who are you? That's what faith is. It's that currency. It's that debit card. It's that identification that what you have in the Father and in the heavenly realms is yours. But in order to withdraw, you need to know who you are, and you need to know how to get it. So get your hopes up. Because God says all that's in heaven, now he wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing you have room enough not to receive. And you're like, well, I know you say that, but I'm, I got a, that's not a $10 bill. <laughs> Re-cola. I, I need a little more than that. Oh, Lord, I know, I know it's coming. No. Know who you are. Know what he says. If it's finances, know what he says about finances. Money is seed. Are you sowing it? Good segue. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I want to share with you where finally we'll wrap up here where scriptures, uh, where hope comes from. We know it comes from scriptures. Romans 15 says it this way. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Hope comes from scriptures. That's Romans 15.3. And lastly, I'm going to share this with you. Sometimes we put so much trust in human beings. As it pertains to fathers, some people have father figures that they absolutely adore. They go to them for everything. Others, not so much. In either case, I'm going to, I want to read this scripture in Matthew 4.21 when Jesus started picking out the disciples. He, it says in Matthew 4, verse 21, it says, Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. He saw them in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. There are people that you have made your father on earth. And God says, make him your daddy. You may have the absolute best relationship with your father in heaven, but you need to put the father in, or the father on earth, but you need to put the father in heaven above that person. You may not have a father figure that was all that much to you. And now you're sometimes playing the victim role. Well, if I would have had a daddy, get that away. 
make your Father in heaven. These disciples worked with their Father every single day. He was teaching them things. And what did they do? They left their Father to follow the Father. Did it mean that he had to give that relationship up? No. I'm grateful that my boys look at me today and they say, I look at you, I watch you, you're an example. But I'm not perfect, am I? Am I? (laughs) I'm not. They know that about me. The reason I'm sharing this is because I had daddy issues, like many of us. Biological daddy issues, father figures, daddy issues. And... I always said, I'm going to be a better father than some of the father figures I've seen. And I went about it by my own efforts. But there came a day that I submitted to the Father in heaven. And it wasn't until I put him first and loved him more that made me be a better father and made me love my sons more than I ever thought I could. It didn't mean I was putting them second. In essence, putting the father first was putting them first. I got my hope in the father for being a father.